Now, I am very encouraged that more and more people are getting hold, a hold of what is called the radical grace message, right? Are you familiar with that language, radical grace message? Now, I'm aware that once you start getting into this radical grace message that emphasizes on the finished work of Christ, right? The finished work of Christ, all of a sudden, there'll be all these other Christians that will be attacking you, saying you're going too far, that you're becoming extreme. That's extreme grace. Here's what I think, that there's a lot of grace teachings out there that I've seen that they're preaching about the finished work of Christ. And personally, I believe they haven't gone far enough. So if you think that what you've heard is already radical, let me mess with your minds a little bit more. Okay, let me challenge you a little bit in your heart. And I can almost guarantee you it makes sense here. It'll really make sense here. And that's the thing. You know, my wife went to Smoky Mountain a couple months ago, and she helped out at the relief effort, you know, for that, the typhoon that hit, what, a couple weeks ago, a month ago? Do you think those children that, are, that lost their homes or they grew up in poverty, do you think they understand the radical grace message? But imagine if you're only saved if you believe in the radical grace message. I've had many people ask me, Josh, you know, we've had these transitions from legalism to grace, but we've always believed in God, but were we only saved when we believed in radical grace? Do you see the question, where it's coming from? Imagine if you were only saved by believing a particular doctrine or a teaching called a radical grace message. Majority of you weren't even saved until maybe four years ago. And if you didn't believe in the radical grace message and you didn't believe in the right <coughs> gospel or the true doctrine, you'll be going to hell. You see how scary it is when we emphasize belief, 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 belief? Now here's where I really appreciate a lot of the grace teachings out there is that I do believe they've taken it a step further. What do I mean? That before, date, you'll notice that among a lot of what we call evangelical Christians, even in America, they would say, you are saved by faith. Of course, grace through faith, but you still have to do something in order to become holy and righteous and pleasing to God and forgiven, etc., etc., right? Now, the grace preachers took it a step further. It's a big step, and I applaud them for that. They took it a step further, and they said, no, 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 no. You don't have to do any of those things to become holy or righteous or pleasing to God. All you have to do is believe. And when you believe, you receive his righteousness, you receive his holiness, you receive his forgiveness. But before that, you're not holy, you're not forgiven, and you're not righteous. If that's the case, can we all admit that even just... 15 years ago, majority of us didn't believe that we had the holiness and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's me. So were you not holy? Were you not righteous then? Because you didn't believe it. Right? And so that's the issue, is that a lot of people before, they'll say you have to do in order to become. Grace preachers took it a step further where you have to believe in order to become. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. That is not the gospel. See, because you're still having to do something, you still have to believe just right in order to become holy and pleasing and righteous in God's eyes. How many of you, I've seen this all over Facebook. A lot of people are into the grace message and say, Jesus plus nothing, Jesus plus nothing. Have you heard of that? Here's what I've noticed. When people say Jesus plus nothing because they're getting into this radical grace message, I'll say, look a little closer in what you're teaching. You're not teaching Jesus plus nothing. You're teaching Jesus plus belief equals holiness and righteousness and forgiveness. Are you seeing what I'm saying? If your salvation was totally dependent upon how you believe, here's what I would like to do with a lot of these preachers, grace preachers or even non-grace preachers that are so focused on believing or doing. I would like to take all these preachers that are focusing on belief in order to become, right? I would like them to take them to a mental asylum 
where there's a lot of crazy people here in Mandaluyong, right? You take them to the crazy house, or I'll take them to a bunch of people that are in comas, or I'll take them to a bunch of babies, or I'll take them to a bunch of people that are mentally retarded, and now you try preaching your good news message about how you have to believe in order to become, and you tell me if that's good news. And that's the thing, folks. I'm not against believing. Believing is very important. That's why we have faith. But is it where you have to believe in order to become? That's a different story. And that's what I'm willing to challenge tonight. And I praise God that the pastors are open enough to allow me to share. Folks, what I like about what I'm seeing now in this community, this is how I know your community will grow. Because your leaders will be humble enough to say, you know what? We're still learning. We're still growing. But imagine you have the same fixed doctrine for 20 years because you just, you're comfortable. But deep down you know this is not getting anywhere. And it's not helping people and neither is it setting them free. Right? And so if, if, if what I'm going to be sharing tonight is true, it will, I believe, it will radically affect the way you read your Bible from now on. And it will radically shift the way you see other people who have a different religion Oh, that's scary for many Christians. They don't like seeing people of other religions on the same footing as them, right? We're the special group, diba. Right? We're the ones going to heaven, right? And the rest is going to burn for hundreds of years? No. Thousands of years? No. Millions? No. Billions? No. Forever. Now you tell me how is that the good news? Oh, you have to believe in Jesus, Josh. I don't deny that. But look how many denomin uh, denominations that we have that believe in Jesus Christ. We have 30,000 plus denominations and sects, groups, that some of them believe that they're the only group that's going to heaven. You see how complicated we've made the gospel? You see how complicated we've made it on how you have to believe in Jesus? Which Jesus? The angry Jesus? Or the forgiving Jesus, that even Christians are debating with each other the way Jesus is lying. I could pull aside maybe five people from the room. I'll say, please explain to me Jesus Christ, his divine nature, his human nature, his incarnation. I want you also to explain to me the atonement. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to get five different answers. Who's saved now? Because these five Christians can't even agree with each other. Or does your salvation have nothing to do with you believing and had everything to do with Christ. Oh, that's a huge shift. 